Good afternoon, everyone. We're very privileged to be here to talk to you all today, and we're going to give you an insight into what we're doing in Northern Ireland with regard to Collaborate and to try and embed it in schools in, in Northern Ireland. My name's Eamon McAteer, and this is my colleague Peter Simpson uh, from Northeastern Education Library Board TV uh, in Northern Ireland as well. So, C2K manages the IT infrastructure for schools in Northern Ireland. We have 1,089 schools in Northern Ireland, and that's a mixture of um, controlled, maintained mainly, controlled being Protestant schools, maintained being Catholic schools. So we have the divide that many of you are aware of, and we're trying to use e-learning to in some way bridge that gap. We have approximately 350,000 users in the system, in the AD, and about 19,000 of those are teachers. We have a mixture of classroom assistants, secretaries, uh, advisors, people like that, which is another 8,000, 9,000 adults. All those adults have a Collaborate license uh, room to use for video conferencing. So to kind of give you um, a bit of background, it was a 170 million pound contract over five years, awarded to Capita MITS, uh, the first education cloud environment in Europe, and it covers MIS, uh, curriculum software, infrastructure and support. And we, we kind of wanted to kind of show you that there's some very good things in Northern Ireland. For example, we rate very highly in literacy, fifth uh, internationally. Um, we rate very well in terms of math, six. This is for primary uh, school children. Um, this is from the International Mathematics and Science Study, TIMS, and also progress in uh, international literacy study, uh, both 2012. Not so good in science, 21st in science, so we want to direct some resources into that, into our, um, into our e-learning uh, to uh, increase STEM um, outcomes. Some bad news. Basically, we have, at the end of primary school, more than one in six do not have the required numeracy and literacy standards uh, expected. By key stage three, so that's the end of post-primary, the middle section of post-primary, uh, more than one in five do not, uh, have not achieved the expected uh, standard. So we're starting to increase the, 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 the kind of downwards uh, slide. And by GCSE, two in five fail to achieve the standards deemed necessary to progress to sixth form, uh, further education, or employment. So we're really starting to kind of see a, 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 a slippy slope downwards. So that means 40%, or 9,000, are still leaving full-time education, not having achieved what they need to have achieved. So on one end, we're doing very well, and the other end, we're doing quite poorly. Video conferencing in Northern Ireland was traditionally done through Tanberg and Cisco uh, units, which are very expensive, as you know, maybe six to 10,000 pound. Uh, we have 100 schools that have those units, uh, leaving us roughly 11, uh, another thousand that don't. So any events that we were running was for those 100 schools and the rest were being left behind. So we took a strategic decision to use the technology that we had, which was Illuminate and now Collaborate, to increase that. With the old system, uh, Tarnberg system, we had to book, and then there was a bottleneck in terms of bookings and, and the actual physical resource. The collaborate pr provision, the collaborate provision allows every teacher, each one of those 18,000 teachers, plus the classroom assistants, to send invites out to whoever they wish to bring into their classroom. We have no number of restrictions, how many people come in, and we bring anyone into the classroom. One teacher decided it would be very good. He teaches Key Stage 2, around 10-year-old children. He decided he would dress up as Santa and have his children um, in the, the primary one watch Santa Claus, and it was very successful. He was able to tell little stories about each pupil as they came up to the front. He video conferenced from the general office, and it was very successful. The only hitch was that one of the primary one teachers, or one of the primary one pupils, several days later, walked down the corridor and said, Santa has the exact same watch as you. So um, he was kind of caught out by a, by a five-year-old. Less expertise needed uh, to use this uh, software, and we're seeing increase in, in, in usage. So 
we initially trained people in how to use Collaborate. Click here, open this, you can see PowerPoints here, do this, very functional training. And our kind of findings is that that is not successful. Teachers were coming back and saying, yes, I know how to do this, I know how to do that, but I don't know why. Now that seems very kind of strange, but when someone's been teaching for 25 years and suddenly they get new technology, they're up to their eyes with what they're doing on a daily basis. Unless it adds value to what they do, it's, it's not, not useful. So we turned it around and made it less functional and turned it into contextual. Would you like to bring the author of the book that you teach your children into your classroom and ask how they created this character? You know, how were they feeling? Did they align themselves to certain characters, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the approach that we're taking. In Northern Ireland, we have a number of approaches to use and collaborate. So we will have school to school, and that will be a controlled school to a maintained school for what we call educational mutual understanding. So they may look at a topic, a curriculum topic, and discuss that. They may discuss um, various aspects of the curriculum. Um, they may want to talk about uh, student voice with each other. Our culture, our school, our community is all kind of topics that we work with them. We also have a project called Dissolving Boundaries. 90 schools from Northern Ireland and 90 schools from Southern Ireland work together on a daily, on a daily basis talking about the difference in the culture and, and their, their, their school and their environment. We also do professional development for staff through Illuminate, through Collaborate. And the work that we're going to talk about a bit today is the higher end side of things, the author, the athlete, the uh, artist, who the children want to see. Um, I would say in Northern Ireland, one of the biggest problems we have is motivation. Some of these children are third generation unemployed. They have no motivation to study. And I think that's kind of, you know, kind of supported by the data there. As they get older, they get less uh, inclined to study and work and, and engage. They disengage the older they get. So we needed the, the support of our colleagues here, Peter's team in Northeastern Education Library Board, TV, to bring that side of professionalism. Up to this, we were standing in front of a, a webcam, two of me and the author or the athlete or whatever, and we were kind of looking into a webcam. And it was kind of a bit amateurish, and we needed to kind of step up our game. So if we were taking, for example, the Titanic, we celebrate successes in Northern Ireland, like Titanic and famine and things like that. And um, we would break the class up into groups of five or six. So with the story of Titanic, it falls into the building, the launch, the maiden voyage, the sinking, the sister ships, and the inquiries. That's the six groups. So each one of you would be in one of those groups. Say four, five, those five would be in the, the built group. Five over here would be in the built group in the control school and they would video conference, rather than having 30 children facing 30 children. And then, through our virtual learning environment, those five and those five children would then answer questions, discussions, learn about each other, and then the face-to-face -face through the video conference. And so that mix of synchronous and asynchronous was, was proven very successful. We are finding that children are developing greater friendships, so that when they do physically come together, they have already established the relationships. So there's no real difference in our Catholic children and our Protestant children because they're breaking down barriers. Some of these children will never have met a child from the other community because that is the large community that, that they are from. Um, I know there's some people here from Northern Ireland who can you know, maybe hopefully agree with what I'm saying here. But even the sports are different. So we'll have Gaelic football in Hurling in the Catholic school and we'll have rugby cricket, hockey, in the, the Protestant school. So even through sport, they don't really mix. Now, there is some sports that, that, that cross barriers, but this is a way, use and collaborate, a way to break down those barriers. So, we have a full working relationship with Peter's team. Two different organizations, both under the umbrella of Department of Education. Strong working relationship. And Peter's been leading this team for 30 years, and. We, we get professional uh, production 
uh, quality out of that. It's been a huge success. Great feedback from schools, adds value to the curriculum. The teacher is no longer having to squeeze this in. This sits along with the curriculum and adds value to what they're doing. Just click on a link, it's easy to connect. And we're bringing rural schools that have very, very small um, um, numbers. For example, one school that co connects to every single video conference has 27, 27 children in it. So we had one school, two big links in one week, we're, we're showcasing it. I was talking about to some teachers about it, that they connected with Gaza and with Jordan in one week. They're breaking down the boundaries. This is a, a rural school. And I was telling a number of teachers about this particular project, and one teacher had a very angry expression on their face saying, I think this is ridiculous. This is really not the right way to go. And I quizzed and tried to extract what was wrong. And she said that these two individuals were bad role models. And for, for those outside of the UK, maybe this will be lost, but um, they thought it was Gaza, the footballer, and Jordan, the, the glamour model. <laughs> So um, we're actually going a wee bit bigger than, than, than the, the individuals, and we're looking at the, um, the, the areas. So um, as I said, motivation is a really big issue in our schools, and we need to reinforce what the teacher's saying. You're five a day, you know, studying hard, focusing, getting your, your, your enough sleep, but sometimes the teacher's voice gets kind of dulled out because it's saying the same thing. So we try and bring in the athletes, the authors, the artists, as I said, and we've got reports that the level of engagement has increased because they feel like they know the author, they know the artist, and, and, and there's a deeper kind of level of learning going on. An example of this, we had a, a project run in Aspire and Achieve where we partnered um, 40 schools from a uh, Catholic background, 40 schools from a Protestant background, who studied the Olympics, Aspire, Aim, Achieve was the name of the project, and they worked on a weekly basis. We had Dame Mary Peters, who was a 1972, our only gold medal winner in the Olympics from Northern Ireland. And we had Wayne McCulloch, um, a world champion boxer who achieved a silver medal in 1992. Wayne McCulloch spoke of um, all the different things I've just said, five a day, uh, getting plenty of rest, um, you know, exercising a lot. And we had a child, a 10-year-old child from a, quite a, a disadvantaged area, asked a question. We do this through, this was through Illuminate, typed in a question in the chat window. You say your favorite color is blue, but you've never fought a professional fight in blue tr trunks. Why is that? And he said, I've been interviewed hundreds of times, and that is the best question I've ever been asked. And that child of 10 years of, old, of age must have went home glowing. The fact is, that child didn't know that. He had engaged with his father, his grandfather, and had read the book and had got this. And that was a, a level of engagement that, that we're looking to get with our, with our children. So, sorry, just going forward here. One of our most popular books in Northern Ireland is Under the Hawthorne Tree from a Dublin uh, author, Marita Conlon McKenna. And it's a story of three children who, who die during the famine and they're buried under a hawthorn tree. Uh, most schools in Northern Ireland, controlled, maintained, integrated, all study this book. So Marita Conlon McKenna came to our Ulster American Folk Park, which is set in famine time. And we interviewed her in a famine cabin with Peter's team, multiple cameras. And 117 schools took part in that, um, which is about 3,500 children watched that live, plus we have the recording for our virtual learning environment. We had something like 360 questions in that 35 minutes. Some schools reported that they were disappointed that they, their question wasn't asked. And I think that would have been a fairly rapid fire session for Marita if we had to go through all 350. Um, one of the schools reported that the literacy outcomes were so much greater that year than the previous years because of the level of engagement. We did another project regarding hate crimes for post-primary, two controlled, two maintained, and an integrated school, all discussed hate crimes through the VLE. And then we had a live video conference with the Minister for Justice in Northern Ireland 
and they explained what he should be doing, not him explaining what, what, what is happening. They, they give him direction. And we had some posters, and I'm going to show you one now in a second. But with this, it highlighted that there was a lot of engagement because with a VLE, you're getting great content in a synchronous kind of discussion, but with the video conference, they're able to look at each other, the children are able to look at each other and address questions directly to the other community. This is the poster that was sent to our first minister. And in hate crimes in Northern Ireland, there's six hate crimes covering racism, sectarianism, etc. And this child, a uh, 13-year-old child, reinvented that and looked at hate crime being about anybody who's different in terms of height, kind of size, color, whatever. And this was a very p powerful poster that actually became, um, you know, kind of was brought to the First Minister's attention. So in terms of what's next, schools tell us what we should be doing next. We take direction from them. We're open to suggestions. And in many ways, we're looking to you, who are the experts in your country, and maybe you can see different ways that we can engage with you in Northern Ireland, because when we open the kind of uh, the door to other countries, suddenly the things that become so insular and so important to the children in Northern Ireland then suddenly become less because they see we have regular contacts with Pittsburgh in the USA, with Russia, with schools in England, a number of different contacts, but we can never get enough because our schools want more and more. And famine, we have taken famine across the Atlantic, we have taken. Um, Titanic, well, it didn't make the transatlantic trip, but, but you know, we're, we're trying to get the, those kind of, the, 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 the kind of globe opened up for our, our video conferencing. So I'm going to hand over to Peter now, and Peter's going to take you through some of the, the rest of the details. Thank you, uh, Eamon. It's funny when you say I've been in education for 30 years. I think it felt like that this morning when I, when I got up. Um, if you don't mind, just before I start, um, it's very warm in here, so I'm, I'm just going to be the total professional walking across to the, the front of my projector, sorry Alan, and just take the coat off. Um, what we do is a complete partnership, and just very, very quickly, so you know where, where I'm coming from, I work for one of five education and library boards in Northern Ireland, uh, with the wonderful name of Northeastern Education and Library Board, which mo most people outside of the country call NEELB, and it sounds horrible. Um, our area covers nine council areas, about 430,000 people. We look after 325 schools and about 72,000 pupils. I work for our curriculum support service in, in the board um, and recently that has been completely decimated as far as numbers are concerned. When I started back in 89 to work for the board we had 90 people helping out in schools. We now have seven and expected to do the same job so you know you all know the sort of the sort of uh, You've learnt the word hopefully crack since you've arrived here. So you've all learnt, you all know the sort of crack that that is. Um, our production unit was set up to try to, to help those curriculum people move that information into schools. And we started to produce DVDs which went into schools and a lot of them became really nice coasters for, for glasses. Shortly after that, our Department of Education decided that we should set up uh, a channel along with our own channel, which we'd just set up. So we set up NELB TV, which is a 24-7 online uh, channel specifically for teachers. Now, it's based on the Northern Ireland curriculum, but we get hits from all over the world. And then they, they got the second most wonderful uh, name in the world. They called it ESAG's Television which only if you live in Northern Ireland, you, you realise stands for every school a good school television. Um, I can say that because my boss thought of it and he's not here today, so that, that's all right. And what both of those channels do is they disseminate good practice to teachers. And they, they get great hits. Lot, lots of teachers are now beginning to use them. Those are the sorts of, of, of hits that we're, that we're getting from you know, what is actually quite a, quite a, small, a small country. Uh, if you're interested and you'd like to have a, a quick look at them some stage, uh, those are the addresses. Uh, quite easy to find. As I say, they're available 24-7. Now, 
I'm going to spend a bit of time just showing you and telling you about what we do. And what I would like to now do is to try and show you how we do it. And I wondered about the best way of doing it. I'll tell you what, let me try this. I thought the best way to explain what we do is to do it from in here. I come from a teaching background where my main subject was media studies. During this time, I also did some freelancing in the broadcast industry. And I suppose the combination of both the academic and the practical gave me a slightly different approach to my teaching and eventually my work with Eamon. We have used traditional video conferencing since the mid-90s, mostly over ISDN lines, usually point-to-point -point or with a small number of multi-point participants. As we all came from a television background, we were always interested in how we could merge the two technologies to enhance the educational potential of the genre to larger groups. Our biggest revelation was finding that our video conferencing telephone had a video input and that allowed us to connect external video devices. It was at this stage that we started to become interested in how places like San Diego Zoo were using their video conferencing kit to take pupils to places they couldn't otherwise go, to meet the zookeeper, etc. Several links with them and with NASA reinforced the idea that we should be using the technology for our own virtual field trips to break down the walls of the classroom. For us, it became important to host our video conferences on location, to bring rich experiences into the classroom using a combination of the technologies. Could you do it? And uh, that was what drove me. Um, from Come Round Primary School, Jed wants to know, how did the Titanic look when you found it? Now, before I let you answer that, I should explain that uh, I got a shock when I saw it. And I'm going to ask, ask the, the guys to put up uh, slide number, uh, let's see, let's, uh, let's take slide number 17, which is the officer's quarters. Yes. And it gives an idea of what you're looking at. When you saw it, were you prepared for what was actually out there? You can see a picture it was of it like a, It was like a ghost town. It was like you came up. Recently, we have developed our virtual field trip calendar with our colleagues at C2K. Now, instead of connecting with a small number of schools, Illuminate has allowed us to connect with many schools simultaneously. And finally, virtual field trips are available to every school in the country. None of this would be possible without the unique partnership we have. So what television equipment do we use to enable us to deliver these virtual field trips? This is our television studio in Antrim and it's one of the tools we use to generate professional virtual field trips for young people in our schools. It's a fully equipped eight camera high definition studio with full lighting grid and audio facilities and most importantly, it's connected via Illuminate on the C2K network to all the schools in Northern Ireland, and in fact, the world. From here, we produce live interactive programs on a range of topics for different age groups. These are produced by a crew made up from any ELB TV and C2K staff. Let's drop in on one. This is a virtual field trip on the Victorians for Key Stage 2 pupils. We currently have 30 schools connected to the programme. Today, David Huntley is presenting both live material from the studio and pre-recorded packages which we shot at the Folk and Transport Museum at Kiltraw. 
In the control room, Adrian is controlling the Illuminate connections with the schools. He's also working with Eamon to pick a range of pupil questions to be sent into the studio for David to address. Our technology turns a normal television program into a fully interactive live virtual field trip. In there, Victorian goes to watch the video conference here today. A lot of you thought it would be. So We've used these facilities here to produce a range of these interactive sessions, including the Justice Minister judging a live competition on posters for the classroom. And play your part in changing society as well. Okay, Minister, thank you very much for that. Um, next, we have St. Mark's High School. St. Mark's, it's over to you. Good morning, Minister. Hate crime is still very alive in our local communities. Hate crime can take many forms. It can be sexism, racism, ageism, or sectarianism. The education officer for Belfast Sioux with some of his friends. And Sally is a python. Sally is a royal python from West Africa. You do get very big pythons. My famous story that I always tell, when we were living in Malaysia, we were driving home one night, and it was getting dark, and suddenly there was this big log across the road, and we couldn't drive around it, so we slowed down and we drove over it, and it wasn't a log, because this log suddenly started moving, and it slithered its way into the storm drain and disappeared. You guys are chomping at the bit, so without further ado, we'll... Um have our first question. School Safer How Internet Day, which connects pupils, teachers and professionals in 49 really countries with so eight week, hours of live old, programming. Um, and safety has been really at the heart of what we've done ever since we, um, we started. And one of the earliest decisions that we made at Facebook was that you had to have your real name and that was how you had to use, um, how you have to use Facebook. And, and that's something we're really committed to. And BBC School Report which was simultaneously webcast using Illuminate on the BBC News Channel and broadcast on the BBC Red Button. Fascinating. Now, let's find out what the weather is going to be like today with school reporters in Northern Ireland. Emma and Antrim, over to you. Like the milder weather will continue over the next few days as a warm front is moving over into the central part of the UK. Of course, in order to create professional materials for pupils during these interactive sessions, we have to be able to film broadcast quality materials on location and then edit them back at base. To help us do that, we have three high definition single camera production kits, which we use to film all of this material. Quite often we'll shoot additional packages to enhance the live experience. You can tell, can't you? The house is kept very smart. A fresh lick of paint and whitewash every year. I have my meals in the kitchen, so it wouldn't be my place to visit the other rooms, but I believe the rest of the house is decked out lovely too. And do you see the barn over Setting these up usually involves many hours on the phone and in pre-production scripting and planning. Finally, if we want to produce a complex program, like the ones you've seen in the studio, but on location, we use our outside broadcast vehicle, the truck. The truck is an eight camera, high definition OB unit with a full range of audio, graphics, slow-mo, microwave links and communications all built into a bespoke vehicle. In the front is the area where we control all the camera feeds. The front position is taken up by the director who is in charge of the programme. Beside him is VT and it's from here that all the pre-recorded packages we looked at earlier are played into the live programme. Sitting behind is the person who is controlling the Illuminate feeds to and from the schools. And beside them, the person who is correlating all the pupil questions and typing them on a screen for the presenter to read out. In the back of the truck is the sound supervisor who is in charge of up to 48 channels of sound during a live programme. 
And of course, all of this works because everyone can communicate with each other. On location, the studio could be anywhere. And today we happen to be in the Ulster American Folk Park in Oma, where David is hosting a live Illuminate session for World Book Day. And um, actually, I have a couple of your books here. Uh, Mad Granddads. Tell us, how did you devise this? Seventy of our schools are connected simultaneously and are all interacting with local author Marita Conlon McKenna, her publisher and illustrator, and of course, John O'Dowd, our education minister. The 3,000 pupils connected to this conference to ask questions of the studio guests and help design a new character for World Book Day. Oshane, the illustrator, has started to create the character based on ideas sent and live by the pupils. Once it's created fully, it's sent back to the schools as a PDF document for them to work on themselves in school. Why did Bridget have to die in the book? With the truck, we can set up a live Illuminate session like this anywhere within Western Europe, thanks to our own satellite connection. This has helped us set up live interactive virtual field trips from some remote locations in the past, such as here at the Giants Causeway, where we took 900 pupils from Virginia on a live visit to the World Heritage Site towards the cliff, you can see a number of columns uh, that stretch up there right in the middle and they look like organ pipes. And a hundred teachers from a conference in London on a live seashore study at Port Stewart Beach, which is really cold. Excuse me a minute. So that's what we do together. We believe it's unique and worthwhile partnership bringing two authorities together for the development of education in this country. As for where we're going, well, who knows? One thing's for sure, wherever or whatever it is, we hope it's every bit as exciting as the last few years have been. So that in a nutshell is uh, what we do, who we are, and um, what we're trying to do in Northern Ireland. Um, we're not saying it's, it's smart, we're not saying it's wonderful, but it's different. And I think that's what we have to do. Uh, the big thing for me, coming from a television background, is audience. And we look at the audience that, that uh, we find in our schools that Eamon has talked about. We find that these are the sort of production techniques that really seem to work well. Because the comparison that children have is television and that's what they say each day. So what we try to make our collaborate sessions, my apologies for calling Illuminate all the way through, what we try to use our, uh, in our collaborate is to try and make it as televisual as we possibly can. So, thank you. Thank you, everyone.